Hey, it's me one more time. Um, so I'm to read uh, Ezekiel chapter 39. So, anyone who watches this video, is if you're a Russian or if you're Ukrainian, this is what the Bible says regarding people who mess with the Jews. And it's probably, I guess the Lord allows those kind of things to happen. So, like in the case of the Jews of East Ukraine, that they might not put up with this crap and just go to Jerusalem, go to Israel. And so, as we'll see, this is what the Lord says regarding the Jews. Chapter 39 says, Therefore, thou son of man, excuse me, man, prophesy against God, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief of Meshech and Tubal. <coughs> I will turn thee back and leave but a sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and will cause thine arrows to fall thy right hand. <clears throat> thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, and thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beast of the field to be devoured. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. And I will send a fire on the God, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. And they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not... Let them pollute my holy name any more. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it is come. And it is done. God's word is sure. God's word is, when God says something, you can count on it to be done. It's a sure thing. God's word will not return void or empty. He speaks as those things as if they were from the, even the past until now. It is done, saith the Lord God, this is the day whereof I have spoken. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set, a, set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers and the bows and the arrows and the handstays and the spears. And they that shall burn them with fire, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. So that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any other out of the forest. For they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoil them. If you look back in chapter 38 of um, <clears throat> Ezekiel, and you see in chapter 11, excuse me, uh, 13, it says, um, the Sheba and Dan and all the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take, it, to take a prey, to carry away silver and, to, and gold, and to take away cattle and goods to take a great spoil? Here's the answer right there. Evidently they spoiled them. Or trying to take a spoil, rather. Tried. Tried. And they shall spoil those that spoiled them, and rob those that robbed them. Say if it were God to kind of remind you back in Esther, whenever the king gave a commandment because of Esther and Mordecai to allow the Jews to defend themselves. Uh, let's see here. And it shall come to pass, verse 11, in that day, in that day, that I will give unto Gog a place, a place that great over the a place there of graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea. And it shall, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, and there shall be they that bury God and all his multitude, and they, they, and they shall call it the valley of Hammon Gog. In seven months shall the house of Israel be burying them of them, that they may cleanse the land. Yea, all of the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall be to them a renown. 
the day that I shall be glorified, saith the Lord God. And they shall sever out men of continual employment, passing through the land to bury with the passengers those to bury with the passengers those that remain, remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search, and the passengers that and the passengers that pass through the land when any seeth a man's bone, bone. Then shall he set up a sign by it until the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hamad Gog. And also the name of the city shall be Hamonia. Hamona, excuse me. Thus shall they cleanse the land. And thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God, speak unto every feather fowl and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come, gather yourselves on every side to, sac to my sacrifice, that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, and of bullocks, and of all of them the fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat to ye. Be full and drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men and with all men of war, saith the Lord God. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed in my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know, shall know that I am the Lord God, their God, from that day and forward. And check this out. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the land of their, to the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. So we're going to know without a doubt. That's why the Holocaust was here, and that's why it was this dysphoria, and all these other things. That's why the part of the tribes of Israel went into Assyria, and part of the tribes went into Babylon. We're going to, all the nations will see and know that, Jew, that the Jews, that the people of Israel trespass against the Lord. That's why he sent them into the lands. We already know that as Christians, it's in the Word of God. And the history itself should know it. I mean, it's as plainly as you see on on the um, on USA Today. It says that the Jews were scapegoats. Why are they scapegoats? Because they, I mean, all the nations of the world pick on them. Because why? Because they're God's people. Why? Because they went against God's word, and so God punished them. It should be obvious to us now. The word of God should be obvious to us rather. History. As a thing of repeating itself. For those who don't learn from it, we have a thing where it repeats itself over and over again. God's history. He repeats himself. Because why? Because we, number one, we need to know it. Number two, we don't learn from it. But anyway, I know that doesn't make sense to some people. But think of it. God keeps saying what he's saying. Throughout all of history, even with with that, without not going in the Bible, so people will learn what the Jews, what happened to them, even outside of the Bible, everything is connected to the Bible. Our world of history is connected to the Bible. The Bible is a connection. The Bible tells tells all about it. No, it doesn't say everything about China and Japan and all the other stuff, and India, Australia, and all that other stuff. But it mentions the nations. I mean, it doesn't tell about their history. But um, it tells, you know, from the time of Noah up until that part of history. But um, it doesn't go into depth of detail about American colonization. The most important parts we need are in the Word of God. But um, it's obvious now. It should be a remarkable um, thing of it being obvious that God has taken these nations and shown us through His Word that what he said is true and right and can be relied upon. The 
is no excuse for not believing the Lord Jesus Christ for our salvation. None whatsoever. There's no excuse not knowing that the Jews are God's people. None whatsoever. There's no excuse not knowing that God punished them for their disobedience. And now he's called them back to be a special particular people, peculiar people rather. And we ought not to mess with them. Because there's God's special treasure. And those who love the Lord for what he's done for us on the cross, we have a special treasure in Jesus Christ. So be careful how you treat the Jew. And even also too, be careful how you treat God's people. Christians, whether they're Jew or Christians. Because you're going to have to ask for it one day. Every knee will bow, no tongue confess. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of the Father. And where was I? Uh, let's see here. I says, according to their uncleanness and according to their, chapter, verse 24, to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, now I'll bring them again. The, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. After that, they have borne their shame and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safe, safely in their land and none made them afraid. <laughs> They're pretty courageous people. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands and, and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, in the sight of many nations, and many nations see that right now, then shall they know that I am the Lord, that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen, but I have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them any more there. It says, and I have left none of them any more there. That's probably why this thing is going on with Ukraine. Basically to run the Jews out. And for whatever Jews stay, they're going to be miserable. Because they have to have this little section of a government that's wanting them to register and pay $50, I think it is, to register property and family and everything else. It's just like World War II. It says, Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. So there we go. Let that, let's, let that be a lesson to you peoples out there, to you Russians, to Ukrainians, whoever it might be. How you treat God's people. Read it for yourself in the Word of God. It's right there. You know, Ezekiel 38, 39. Read, actually, read the whole Bible. We'll see you later.